Hello, welcome to the third video on trigonometric graphs. This time we're going to look at what happens when we add a plus c to the end of one of our equations. So video one looked at if we had a number in the front, remember that stretched amplitude up the way, so it made it taller. If it was 3 sin x, it would go 3 minus 3, rather than just to 1 and minus 1 in a normal sine graph. And we've also looked in the second video at the stuff equations with a number in the middle like cos 2x so rather than being between 0 and 360 with one wave because there's two you would have two waves between 0 and 360 and with a number at the front it would still be between 1 and minus 1 so we're going to look at today what happens when you put a plus or a minus at the end okay so that's our success criteria to sketch graphs of the form a sine bx plus c and a cos x bx plus c and describe a usual amplitude period intercepts and maximum minimal values Okay, just a kind of caveat at the start of this, I'm going to do a couple of examples that are quite tricky. I'm just showing you that to, to show you the full topic. I have not really seen too much past uh, bronze silver in this topic in the exams, but I do think in terms of fullness and completeness, how I'm going to do it all. Okay, a wee investigation here. Again, looking at x and sine x. And we're now going to look at sine x plus 2. So, for this on here, we're going to have the values for sine x, and all we're going to do is add 2 to them. So 0 add 2 is 2, 1 add 2 is 3, 2, minus 1 add 2 is 1, and 0 add 2 is 2. Okay, so for our normal sine graph, which goes between 180 and 360, well that's much nicer than the last one I did, between 1 and minus 1, when I add 2 to all of the terms to every part of the sine graph, every point along here, 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 here and here is just going to get too higher. So the whole graph is moving up two places. So it's going to, instead of going between 1 and minus 1, it's going to move up, we call that the green wave, it's going to start at 2 this time, and it's going to go up 3, down to 1, and back up to that middle term. Okay, now I didn't do it there, but it is quite handy sometimes just to have that middle line in to make sure that you are kind of centred around it. So the height there would be 3 and 1 still, and the middle term would be 2. Now by the same token, when we look at sine x minus 5, again working from that sine x here, it's going to be negative 5, negative 4, no, yeah, hi, there's... Uh, negative 5, negative 6, it's back to negative 5. So we've got the same graph as the sine graph that we started with, but it's moved down 5 places. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere down here, starting at negative 5, coming up to negative 4, down to negative 6, and back to negative 5. And again, the middle line does help you kind of keep it neat. Okay, so that's your basic idea if you have a number at the end of your trigonometric graph it's going to move your graph up and down okay so i'm going to do three examples again this would be quite nice for your notes okay i'm just going to get rid of that box perfect okay so y equals cos x plus one that is always handy here it's always very handy to think about or even just have a quick sketch of what's happening with just a normal cos x so a normal cos x goes from 1 to move down to minus 1, with the middle point is 0. Now when you add 1 to all of those terms, that 1 at the top is going to become a 2. The middle of it is going to go up from 0 to 1. And then the bottom is going to go from minus 1 to 0. So your tops here, your middles along there, wasn't very good, and your bottom is just at the x-axis. So you're going to have a cost graph that looks exactly the same, but it's just one higher and it's moved up, still at 360 and 180, sorry. Okay, so same cost graph, one place higher. Now in B, we've added in a 2x there. Okay, and we know all that does is it squeezes the graph in, so you've got 2 in 360. Okay, so if we look at, okay, just before we add the 3, okay, we're going to have two sine graphs like that in 360. And it's going to be 1 and minus 1, because we've got nothing there. There's no number before, so it's still going to be 1 and minus 1. When we add 3, that 1 is going to come up to 4. 
the midpoint at zero is going to come up to three, and then the mid uh, bottom of the, the minimum points are going to be at negative one, moved up to two. So get a wee dotted line again, just to go provide a bit, make it a bit neater. And you're going to have exactly the same graph, but three points higher. Okay, so we know this bit. We already know how to do this. We're just making it from here, three places up. Okay, I'm going to take that away. Too many arrows. Uh, right, so lastly, C. Again, it's very tricky, this one. It's got a lot of stuff going on. You've got three different uh, three different things happening to your graph. You've got the 6 at the front, which stretches amplitude to 6 and minus 6. You've got 10x, which means you've got 10 waves in 360. So the period of one wave will be 36, because you, those 10 waves fit in 360, so one wave is going to fit in 36. And then that minus 5 is going to move it down five places. Okay, so what we'll do, we're going to draw 6 sine 10x first, just as a wee guide. So we know that's going to go up to 6, down to minus 6, and it's going to be up to 36 and 18, to save me drawing 10 different ways, which is going to get even messy R in this. So 6 minus 6. When you move it down 5 now, that 6 is going to go to 1. The middle point there at 0 is going to go down to minus 5, and then the minus 6 is going to come somewhere down here to minus 11. Okay, and then you've got exactly the same graph, so you're going to go up to 1, down to minus 11, and then up to 5. Forgot to do my line in the middle to make it easier. I did all right there, actually. Okay, and then if you are doing multiple graphs on one, make sure you're very clear and label what one is your final answer. Okay, so that is how to draw them. There's a lot of stuff going on, but you already know that first part. The only difference we're making is moving it up and down at the end. Now, we'll do a little bit of identifying the graph here. It's slightly trickier, but the key point there, so if we look at the first one, is that 7 and 5, and the middle is going to be 6, which means the amplitude, the difference from the middle to the top, is just 1. So this is a normal cost graph. Okay, but we know the middle point of a normal cost graph is usually zero, and the top is usually one. So this has moved up six places. Okay, the difference between the six and the seven is one. The graph has moved up six places, so that's going to be y equals cos of x. Okay, again, we're at 360 for one wave, so there's no number in beside the x. But we're six further up. Okay, we're going between minus one and one, up between five and seven. Okay, for part B, let's have a wee look. We've still got one wave in 360, so it's just going to be a normal x. We know it's a sine wave, so it's going to be sine x. Now, the difference between the middle of that sine wave and the bottom and the middle of that sine wave and the top is 3. So the amplitude is 3, which means I've got a 3 at the uh, front of that sine x. And normally, my sine wave starts at 0, but it's moved down 3 places down to here. So that means it's minus 3 at the end. Okay, and this is what I mean by it's a bit more complicated, these ones. And really, anything past AB is unlikely to be examined. It can be, but it's unlikely. Uh, but you can see how we've got lots of different things that are all quite similar coming into the same place. Now for C, let's look at it first. We've got starting there, one wave, two waves, three waves in 360. So we know, and that's a sine wave. So it's going to be sine 3x, that's our first clue, between the midpoint of the graph here and the top and bottom, between 5 and 7 there's 2, between 5 and 3 there's 2, so the amplitude is 2, so it's 2 sine 3x, and lastly we know that the sine wave usually starts at 0, so it's moved up 5 places, so we're going to add 5 to it. So my graph there is y equals 2 sine 3x plus 5. Now you can see quite quickly how just those individual rules you can kind of put them together and make it more complicated. Okay, and we've got to we've got to be able to do that, but as I say, the, more co the most complicated ones here are maybe not going to be examined so much. Now, there you go. There's six questions to try. Again, a gold, I've tried to make gold actually quite tricky, uh, just to give people a stretch. Most of the video, give it a try. Cheerio.